by the government of the United States. The first uh, thing we need to discuss at some length is the rise of China. It's certainly making the press these days. People seem to understand that something's happening in China, but most people are not fully aware of the full breadth and depth of what's happening in China. In fact, most of the people in China do not understand the historical implications of what's going on. China is the next great country in the world, whether we like it or not. There are a lot of people who do not like the rise of China. The 19th century was the century of the UK. The 20th century was the century of the US. The 21st century is going to be the century of China. Turning now to some corporate news, the largest takeover by, of an American company by a Chinese buyer. Smithfield Foods, one of the biggest pork producers in the U.S., has agreed to sell itself to a Chinese firm for $4.7 billion. The boards of both companies have already okayed the sale, but as Michelle Caruso Cabrera tells us, the deal will likely face heavy scrutiny. The United States did something it has never done before. It cleared the takeover of a U.S. bank by a Chinese state-controlled company. This does, however, demonstrate an ever-increasing American interest in the Pacific, but many are questioning the exact motives behind the move, and none are more critical than China. Manhattan's tallest building is drawing criticism from New Yorkers. It's over a decision to honor the 60th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party's takeover of China by shining red and yellow lights. Totalitarian dictatorship should not be honored by the Empire State Building tonight. Protesters are red with anger over the Empire State Building's decision to honor China's red revolution. Bulls and bears on what happens to U.S. in this China syndrome. What, what is practiced in China is not free markets, not freedom. I mean, they, they kill their political dissidents. They, they do bad things to their people that disagree with them. The same consulate that has worked to incite hate crimes on U.S. soil against groups like Falun Gong. And the same consulate that represents a regime that's caused tens of millions of deaths since it took over China exactly 60 years ago. America does not support China's government because China's government is the enemy of human rights, enemy of freedom. During the games, athletes and visitors have been exposed to a very different language, Chinese. Uh, former President George W. Bush actually started a national security language initiative and invested $114 million into expanding these programs all the way from the elementary school level up to the university level. So before Ohlone, you know, you could really only take Chinese language classes um, in certain select elite colleges and universities, but now, you know, you're seeing these seven and eight-year-olds who are pretty fluent, and, you know, the educators that I spoke with in my story are saying that they're really hoping that these people can be the next Hillary Clintons and Barack Obamas and hopefully bridge the gap between the United States and China. Bukachi. What is Bukachi? Mandarin Chinese really isn't that hard to learn and speak. Ni hao, ni hao ma. We'll sure how. Bring American jobs back to America. So this week, it was shocking to learn so many great infrastructure projects are underway in America, rebuilding bridges and roads in American cities, but they've hired Chinese firms and Chinese workers. Let's see, this is made in China. Made in China, China. Why is the strongest country going to go to the world? It's not the Roma, it's the Roma, it's the Roma. Meguo 现在他们都得给我们干活。For <laughs> very easily, and so we become a market. We become indebted in U.S. dollars, and the locally overvalued currency makes it easy to buy dollars so that we can pay foreign debt. 
China does what any intelligent sovereign country should do, which is exactly the opposite. They have an undervalued uh, currency, or they just let it slide to its, its real and true value so that they can export a lot, and they do not yet become a mass market for other countries' products. So in a way, I think that the Chinese are doing the right thing. I think that they are continuing to grow. And of course, this raises many concerns in America, Britain and the European Union, basically the euro and dollar zone, because they would like to see countries uh, uh, doing the things they wanted them to do, as Argentina, Brazil, and many other countries do. But China will just not toe that line. Chinese Defense Minister General Liang Guangye and a team of top military officials toured the U.S. Marine Corps base at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina on Wednesday. This is the first visit to the U.S. by a Chinese defense minister in nine years. Liang and his 24-member delegation arrived in a helicopter. U.S. Marines welcomed them and took them for a tour of the base. Long Beach Naval Weapons Shipyard, one of the only deep water ports in America that our military controls. Actually, only one of three. And it's the only one on the western side of the United States controlling the Pacific. The Clinton administration decided to shut it down in 1993. And now, he's letting his good buddies, the military industrial complex of China, leadership of China, to have our only deep water port right in the heart of our western coastline. China's military rise, which America fears next. Chinese experts say the real aim of America's pressure on Iran is regime change. They believe Washington wants to destroy the Islamic Republic in order to strengthen its dominance in the Middle East. Hillary Clinton, recently it was reported, and I want to get your take on this, Bob, uh, in Beijing, China, where she, over there, she was over there to broker a deal on any future borrowing that we might do from China by way of bonds, uh, treasuries, and, uh, well, there's a little caveat that was thrown in this. If the United States defaults on this, and we're talking trillions of dollars, that uh, there's a little thing that the United States government will institute called eminent domain to pay the Chinese back with real estate. Have you heard anything on this, Bob? Oh, yes. And it's possible and it's probable. Warships from the East China Sea Fleet of the PLA Navy have arrived in the Western Pacific Ocean to conduct maritime drills. The two warships, uh, Foshan and uh, Huaihua, are first and the second generation missile frigates. The exercise is their first blue water training drill. Earlier, the warships conducted a series of mock exercises during its voyage to the Western Pacific Ocean that covered surveillance and tested nighttime capabilities. My family, my whole family, Muslim. So, my father, my mother, grandfather, grandmother. And now in China, more and more Muslim. Uh, lots of my friends, before they are not Muslim, but now they are Muslim. Chinese Muslims. Boys, I love you both, but I want you to do what I would do. Kill this piece of... <laughs> with the wrong family. How did this happen? There's a new class of weapon. Everything went offline and never came back. They wipe us out, including U.S. Central Command. What am I supposed to do? I'm gonna fight. Anybody who wants to join is welcome to it. We'll hit them on our terms. We're the Wolverines. And we create chaos. We need to steal that weapon. It'd be the foothold we need and take our homes back. I can. Yes, you can. Relax. Squeeze. We inherited our freedom. Now it's up to all of us to fight for them. For them, this is just some place. 
For us, this is our home.